Hello everyone and welcome back to Just Finish Coding. This is part 3 of our Sudoku series on Scratch 3. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Just finished coding. Now I have to interject right here that if you've not watched parts 1 and 2, please watch them before you come here because as you can see I'm picking up from where I left off and for this video to make sense you need to have watched the previous ones. I'll leave a card for you right here, please watch the videos and then come right back. If you're still here I'm going to assume that you've watched parts 1 and 2, in which case this video is going to be a relatively light video where we're just going to have, um, you know, deal with the um, deal with the aesthetics of it and make sure that our program looks good before we get into the, you know, little harder parts of our code. So I'm going to start off by heading off to the background and I'm going to import the background. And once again, the files are linked in the description in the form of a Google Drive attachment. So what you can do is you can just head over to the, um, uh, to the images folder and click on background.svg. And as you can see, this is the background that we will be using. And you can uh, delete the um, uh, backdrop one or whatever backdrop you had initially. So um, uh, I'm not entirely sure why the background is kind of, you know, off the screen. So I will try and fix this up and then I'll be right back. So I just moved all of these things to um, slightly, you know, to the top left. I just uh, click control A and move them um, and you can do the same thing. And I think there was some error when I tried to switch um, from vector to bitmap and then back and then save the program and I'm, enti I'm not entirely sure why this even happened because my background was set pretty accurately in the preview that uh, I showed you initially. So anyway, so once you're done with this, that's going to be our background that we'll be using and uh, you can also import this other sprite which is called surrounding I believe. So you can click on that and this is this um, this is the surrounding area. So when we click the green flag, and uh, you can see that we have these um, all these squares showing up. We basically have to move this um, guy to something like this. Okay, that's going to be the way we want it to be. And uh, what we can do is uh, within the code, you can see when I receive init, when I receive um, init, uh, we can go to this particular position, which is negative 90 and negative 35. So once you go here, this should be almost perfectly um, set up. Uh, so go to this particular position and then we will hide, okay? And um, after we um, start the game, then we can show ourselves. Uh, and it's not actually start, and I created a message just for this. And uh, the message is um, show boundary. So when we receive show boundary, um, we will show ourselves. And that is pretty much what we need to do. And uh, you can add in a go to front layer because we need to make sure that it's above the squares. So just add that go to front layer. And that is pretty much all you need. So when you click the green flag, all the squares set up. And once it does, you can see that our you know show boundary sets up perfectly on top of those squares. And I'm going to click on close. And now it's time to download the, not download, import the next particular sprite. And this sprite is going to be called text and it's going to have three different costumes. Uh, I'm first going to click on the one which says game on. And as you can see, this is the sprite which we want. And I'm going to put it right on top there. And I think that's a pretty reasonable um, place to put it. So I'm going to rename this to text. And uh, I will also import the other two, sp uh, other two images within its costume. So click on upload sprite. And we will be um, using these two things. So click on open. And that, there you go. So it's pretty neat right here. And I'm going to start this off with as usual when I receive init. When I receive init. I will be hiding myself, I believe, but I will also go to this particular position. So go to um, negative 100 and uh, negative, um, uh, I believe it is not negative, it's 145. So that's going to be our position. And uh, when we receive start, then we will switch to game on, not you win, but game on. So when I receive start, switch costume to game on, and then we can show ourselves. And that is pretty much going to be it. So when we press the green flag, all of this happens, um, then we show our boundary and then you can see that the game on shows up right on top. And there you go, that's going to be the aesthetics of our game mainly. And you can see that um, uh, something is right here, which says speed to switch, arrows to change, and then there's some white space right on top. And the reason I had that white space there was to make sure that we could enter in um, the certain variables which we would want the user to see. 
So I'll create those variables right now. So the first variable is going to be called marking and uh, you can click uh, set that for all sprites and then click OK. And the second variable is going to be called, um, I believe, pencil side. OK, and then you can click OK. And both these variables, we can uh, let them be seen for now. And you can move it um, to be so that it's right next to those um, next to those texts. And you want pencil side to be for arrows to change and um, marking for P to switch. And uh, marking is going to basically be whether we're using the pen or the pencil. And if you remember correctly from the preview, we could also use a pencil to enter in, you know, scribble some um, numbers on top of each square. And we can use the pen to enter in some actual stuff, which is going to check with, uh, check with our um, code whether we actually won or not. So those two things are going to be the case right here. And we can switch between pen and pencil if we click the P key. And um, pencil side is going to be on which side of the square we want to add in the scribble marking. So we can either add in the pencil marking on the left side or on the right side. And that's going to be controlled once again by the arrow keys. And solution, that's going to be, well, um, uh, the actual solution, which is going to show up. And um, you can see that we have an arrow which says click to view. And um, I'm going to import another sprite to make sure that um, there's a button right there which we can click. And um, that image is called, I don't think I have it just as yet. So I will import it once and then I'll be right back. So I just got the checker um, uh, in my particular file and I think it was in my downloads folder or whatever. So you can just head over to images and then click on checker and that should show up. So this is going to be the checker that we'll be using and we'll want it to go to somewhere around this position. So what we can do is um, uh, from events grab a when I receive init, when I receive init, we will hide ourselves, and uh, when we receive um, start, then we will um, just show ourselves. And it's also important to add in some particular coordinates that we need to go to. And the coordinates which I'll be using is going to be 210, comma negative 120. And you can use different coordinates if you want uh, to make it a little more, a little bit more precise. But um, this is what works for me. Um, so when I receive a start, I will be showing myself. So when I receive um, start show and that will be pretty much it so when we click the green flag all of this happens and then we um, also show our, our solution clicker and i'll be renaming this to be solution clicker and uh, i'm going to end this video right here it was a fairly simple video we just imported a whole lot of things and made sure that our program looked a lot better but in the next video we'll get into a little bit more of the hard stuff where we had an I think pencil marks in the next video. And then we'll also be getting into how to change the marking, how to change um, to, you know, the pencil numbers and all of the other stuff that we need to include within our Sudoku game. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.